Thanks. Uh, so my question is for Nikita. Uh, I was thinking if you are also able to do some heterogeneity analysis. Uh, I mean, for the relatively wealthier uh, household, or I, I don't know uh, if you can look at, in, you are looking at individual level, right? So you could check for buffer stock mechanisms and if the relatively wealthier can draw down their assets to just compensate, uh, insure away the shock and they don't have to look for employment in other sectors right away. And for the females, uh, one, one interesting thing would be uh, to check uh, their access to self-help groups if that kind of benefits them somehow. Since you have such a well-rounded data set, it would be great if you could contribute to that part of the literature as well. Thank you. Yeah, so I think uh, the first thing is really to congratulate the team. I think those are very, very good papers. I think uh, a lot of effort, a lot of uh, insight have gone into that. Yeah, so I think mine is just like a clarification from you. Uh, one is on the Jeddah, uh, the Jeddah effect. Eh? The, I think I didn't get the title I came a bit with. So, yeah, so uh, uh, I, I thought uh, that uh, perhaps uh, the, the non-farm non activities uh, that uh, uh, we are we are talking of uh, could have also been affected by the drought, uh, so that perhaps uh, one would really want to uh, see uh, the issue of the income uh, of of men actually who are said to be really advantaged because I think the uh, the way I could get is like uh, men really are not really highly affected. Yeah, so I think uh, how different were the incomes uh, of men. Uh, comp I mean, uh, uh, male compared to, to, to female, because I would imagine that uh, uh, some of the activities, especially in the in, in the in the in the in the area of in the rural area, would be related to the to the to the to the farm. Yeah, so that is for for the for the for the uh, uh, for the gender and the uh, the drought effect. Eh? Yeah, so uh, in terms of uh, Ajra, I think. Uh, I think my my my, uh, uh, my problem is uh, when you talk of uh, measuring uh, your uh, your effect of uh, environmental issues like uh, pollution and all that uh, health related, and then you uh, brought the issue of human capital there, and uh, you say that you are going to measure that, or maybe a hypothesis that uh, you are going to use a uh, uh, hours hours lost, uh, so. Uh, and, and in terms of our loss, you also want to uh, match that one with the wage, for example. So I think my problem here comes in terms of uh, the age structure, for example. Yeah, so that, for example, we are talking about uh, somebody who is uh, not of age uh, uh, to participate in work, for example. So you know, there's no there's no wage there. Uh, the same also applies to perhaps uh, old people who are already. Uh, out of job. I mean, uh, we uh, uh, the kind of of of, of wage that you want to uh, to to, uh, to uh, for example align with those people, uh, then is like uh, zero. So then, uh, and of course, uh, given that we are talking about, uh, is it Nigeria, the country? Uh, where we, which is led by a lot of uh, informal sector, and of course, in informal sector, we have people who are actually not earning. Yeah, so then. Uh, uh, my worry is like uh, that uh, of earning and the wage, uh, the wage related the kind of uh, mapping uh, might uh, dampen your, uh, your, your, your analysis to some extent. I think that is in terms of hypothesis uh, when you are explaining. So I think perhaps you might want to uh, uh, give us some insight on that. Okay, then uh, uh, for the share. Uh, so I think uh, mine is like uh, the same concern you had uh, that uh, Gini uh, is actually uh, Gini is actually improving uh, growth. Yeah. So I think uh, uh, perhaps uh, what do you think, what do you have to say about that? Uh, is uh, because that too then you are saying that uh, Gini uh, is uh, good for growth. In college is good for growth, and uh, perhaps uh, we don't want to go that direction. Uh, then the other issue is uh, in terms of government effectiveness. Of course, I saw the government effectiveness there uh, had a negative 
a, a negative effect. Eh? Of course, not significant, but that uh, does not always say that not being significant is not something that we, can inter we cannot interpret according to the current literature. So what could be the effect? Because I think uh, that is really going against uh, a hypothesis that uh, government effectiveness would really be very uh, great for, uh, would actually boost uh, growth. I mean, to, uh, I mean, that could be the hypothesis. What could be the issue? Of course, uh, uh, you might not want to interpret it because it's still not significant. Yeah, so that is what I have. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, my question is for Nikita. I really enjoyed your uh, analysis. I think two quick comments I had was, uh, I saw in your list of references, we had Burke and Embrick, uh, which kind of looks into effect of climate change on US agricultural output, right? I was wondering if you are interested in kind of quantifying the short term effect as opposed to the long term effect. And I saw that, you know, you're looking into deviation of precipitation shocks over time, right? So have you thought about interacting precipitation with temperature and also kind of quantifying the relative short term effect as opposed to the long term effect? I know maybe that's not, maybe that's a different paper, but you know, that's what I was thinking about. Thank you. Okay, so I had a question on whether wage effect in the macroeconomy would affect the inequality reduction. And also the fact that some countries in the data set have a large portion of the informal sector. That's very true. So the idea of uh, inequality convergence is measured through the aggregate income of the economy. So whatever wage effect exists, we can we can look at this uh, estimation as a general equilibrium type of idea. So whatever wage effects that are there will be captured in the aggregate. So basically we are just looking at convergence in inequality at the macro level. So wage effect might not really affect that process because all that will be captured by the macro level data, hopefully, that's the hope. But in, also in terms of uh, um, inequality, right, uh, and, and the environment. The mechanism is that when countries have, uh, experience a lot of environmentally related impact on health, the quantity of human capital and the quality of human capital is reduced as a result of the environment. So if human capital, like you and me, we have to be at school eight hours a day, 40 hours a, uh, 40 hours a week to work. But if you spend 10 hours of that 40 hours in the hospital because you ate contaminated food or you drank contaminated water, that is a reduction in your income and it would it would go into the aggregate and reduce the aggregate income. Let's say about 50% of people have a reduction in their income, then the aggregate income or the GDP per capita for that year reduce. And the Gini coefficient is computed based on that uh, uh, aggregate G GDP per capita. So that is how the mechanism gets in there. So thank you so much for your you know, very interesting questions. In fact, uh, so Shushmita's point about heterogeneity, so that actually gives me time to, you know, shed some insight into the results we are getting in terms of heterogeneity, which I was not able to do because of the time limit here. So yes, we look at heterogeneity by the imp the assets that they have, uh, whether the you know they have young children in the household, the socio category that they're coming from, whether they're coming from the lower, uh, you know, um, uh, lower reserved categories of SCs and SC. STs that we have in India. And what I'm really finding there is that most of this, you know, gender difference is coming for women that are more mobility constrained, being women who have, who are married, women who have young children, and women who are coming from the lower status of social categories. But the results are not driven by the economic status or by the poorer households compared to the richer households. So this gender differential is there, but uh, in addition, your question was also about the overall impact. So yes, the richer groups are able to offset the impact better, but they're not able to fully offset it, right? So even they will have some uh, male members of the household migrating and doing non-farm work. And if they previously were also engaged in non-farm, that's what we are finding. So richer group, they engage more in non-farm work compared to the poorer groups. But the dependence on non-farm goes up even more during drought shocks. So I hope that addresses your question. And regarding the access to 
SHGs, which are self-help groups, right? So in our sample, every woman was part of the group. And it's a namesake participation because it was, you know, like since the government had launched this group thing, everyone was enrolled in it. But when I was doing my field surveys and interacting with those people, on the ground, the, the SHGs are not really working because everyone is just enrolled and there is no support coming through that. So uh, that's why I did not look at heterogeneity by that because that is one for all women in my sample. And uh, to uh, the second question, and yes, that's very relevant, right? So the income in the non-farm sector, right? So it's uh, in terms of the descriptives, if I look at the absolute income in farm and non-farm work, they are higher for men in farm compared to women in farm and in non-farm compared to women in non-farm. And if I just compare across farm and non-farm, again, the income in non-farm are higher compared to that of farm for both the gender. So when men are taking up these non-farm activities, they are earning more than they were previously earning in farm activity, and which is also higher than what women will be earning. And even if drought has an impact, so the direct impact is on the farm sector. There are indirect impacts possible on the non-farm sector also. And as Emmerich, like in Emmerich's paper, he does talk about uh, this local demand having an, you know, uh, this spillover effect on the non-farm sector. But when we look at the relative changes in these earnings, the fall is larger in terms of the farm earnings relative to the non-farm earnings. So that's why I said that the non-farm sector is more resilient or I would say less affected by the drought shocks compared to the farm sector. And uh, to uh, the last end of, you know, it's very important, yes, persistence, right? We are talking about weather shocks, what about climate really, and in the long term, what is happening? Uh, and that's why, uh, it's, that's what uh, the extension, the ongoing work is to understand this year, you were hit by a weather shock, you lost job, women were out of the labor market. Next year, there is no such shock. Are women coming back? What is happening to their long-term participation? Does one time exit because of these weather shock? Does it have a permanent effect or is it a temporary impact? So that's really, uh, you know, the idea. And in uh, our specifications, in a robustness check, we do look at the interaction of precipitation and temperature. So uh, one way is to have uh, the negative productivity shock being captured by temperature shock itself. And the second was to have controls for temperature in addition to precipitation. And you know, we get very similar results here. And the, yeah. I would like to add that you can add draw, uh, beside that humidity, relative humidity. Because mm -hmm. it's uh, temperature humidity is much uh, persistent, yeah, for than the precipitation sometimes. Yes, yes yeah. absolutely. They call it the the class, uh, the the uh, temperature. Yeah. So yes, uh, no, absolutely, we can do that because the thing is, you know, uh, you can throw in a number of things, but at the same time, they are very correlated right, yeah. at the end of the day, right? So drought and temperatures, they are themselves uh, highly correlated. So yes, I can definitely try the humidity measure also because that is also available with that data set. So yeah. So thank you. Very interesting questions. Thank you so much. Uh, for the, the, the last one, uh, I really appreciate your comments. And it's a, it's a work in progress, so we're seeing what's going on with the data set. And uh, dealing with three equations, is, it's very hard to deal, uh, despite the fact that the literature you, can have a, a different explanation. Sometimes uh, inequality can boost growth, or it, it doesn't boost it, or it's, there is a negative relationship. So this is uh, available in the literature. So the literature for the relationship between growth and inequality is a little bit ambiguous. So there is no uh, clear sign that we can say, yes, it, it goes that way. So, uh, and as well as we are gonna look for the different continent, the results for different continent, the different income groups. So we're still uh, experimenting the, the, th the, the simultaneous equation models. So thank you so much for uh, attending our, uh, yeah, I have a, yeah, okay, sorry. <laughs> So uh, I think you, you had a positive relationship between human development indicator and heat. I think that positive relationship is not a causal relationship because what you see is that globally, human development is increasing. The, the, the quality of human capital is increasing. So the fact that it's increasing is exogenous on its own. And the fact that climate or environment, uh, um, 
weather related problems are happening those are also exogenous on its own they are completely exogenous factors so there's i don't see the any theoretical backing why we should regress human development indicator on a climate related or disaster anything there is no theory that can link the two so i think these are two exogenous effects that is why there is a positive relationship. It's because they are talking to each other in a different way. They are all moving upwards globally. So that is what you are seeing. So the result is correct, but I don't think the human development indicator should have been in the model. That's, that's, that's just my point. And I had the same <laughs> point. So that's what I did. <laughs> oh, it's probably we are thinking this on the same lines. Yeah. Uh, and you know, in addition to that, uh, I wanted to say that you know, uh, in terms of the number of hits they are experiencing, it's possible that they're adjusting in terms of the investment, right? Mm -hmm. That was your, some insight coming from your paper, also, right? That's how it ties well with that finding because it's depending on the kind of uh, you know the exposure that you're getting, also the type of hits you're experiencing. You would. Uh, our coping mechanism would be to invest in these human capital formations, right? So probably that is what you're capturing, and there is a lot, like it's, it's not causal for sure, but you might want to dig a bit deeper into the reverse relationship of hit having an impact on the HCI, so. And uh, another question to you is about, so all of your analysis, uh, Cetras Peribus, uh, it was about uh, you know, if we assume that other things are the same, how it will have an impact, you know, in how many years we will see those convergence, divergences and all, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, my question really was, uh, of all the previous years of data that we have seen, how much has actually been, you know, following the same rate, right? Because given that, you know, depending on whatever level you are on, the policies are always, you know, evolving on the basis of that level. So if that is the case, then, you know, it is possible to construct bounds around the estimated number of years using that information, and that will give us a better picture. Okay, so uh, it's not 90 years, but it ranges from 80 to 100 years. Okay. So, do you not think that would be a better approach to? Yeah, I think it would be fine to create a boundary that fine. This is not exact, but it, it will fall within this bracket, and that would mean that you, I need to choose a different rate for each of so i need to have an upper an upper rate of accumulation and a lower rate of accumulation so i can develop that bound but what i currently have is the average of the two the average of the lower bound and the upper bound that is the result that is there so i think that is a, a brilliant comment so that i can have those two to give the viewers perspective as to where where the data falls so yeah i think i can incorporate that thank you Okay, so uh, any other questions? Any other comments? Okay, thank you so much for being here and listening to the interesting uh, talks and uh, have a good day. Thank you. <laughs>